welcome to the December 3rd Council Workshop. Um, this is going to be kind of a, a bit of an open format. This is for a proposal that has landed in the lap of the community. So um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of punt right off to Tom. Um, everybody's getting first introductions to this, so I don't know anything. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is a matter that I've been dealing with since, I think, 2010 or so. So it's been an ongoing conversation, and it's frankly a ready-made item, a perfect item for a workshop. Uh, before anyone invests further time or effort or I speak on behalf of the town, I really I think it's important for all involved to get uh, a sense and gauge the council's interest and appetite in moving forward. So uh, Jim and Kathy Wellhand are here this evening, and Melissa Murphy, uh, their attorney, is here as well, and to pull another chair up. So if, uh, if you permit, I think it'd be best to bring them up and um, hear from them what the proposal is and then perhaps get into some discussion. Come on up. It is such a small, small world. We grew up as neighbors. Oh, so they were <laughs> 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 some disclosure here. Our mother's the best friend. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I used to skate in his little ice pond right in front of his house. <laughs> that is a small world. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. So just by way of introduction, we did provide the council some materials that uh, Melissa put together. Uh, I've also, as part of that, I've projected up here on the screen for the public's benefit and those in the audience, um, a quick schematic that shows the current makeup and, and ownership of property. And so just for orientation, if I could, Melissa, before you get started, sure. this uh, large parking area is Heard Park in Pine Point, um, off King Street and Avenue 5. The Welland lot is this lot, essentially 50 feet wide, and extends from King Street all the way to <laughs> Uh, high watermark. High watermark oh, yeah. is shown there as the kind of the frontal dune, but it, um, I think it probably technically extends a bit further. Extends to the water. Yes, it does. Yeah. So we've got a, a picture here that shows yeah, that. And the town owns um, <laughs> the adjacent lot that runs a similar dimension. I suspect we've not done the full title work and deed research, but by all appearances, they look to be almost mirror images of each other, if you will. Right. And uh, just by way of historical background, I've not done full exhaustive deed research, but this obviously is the National Extension of Avenue 4 that is, we've not chosen to, to construct. And I've uh, traced it back to at least a survey in 1875 that shows mm -hmm. that in town ownership. Um, wow. Clearly as part of this would be full due diligence to understand um, marketable title and, and the like on both properties. So. Uh, again, I've not done exhaustive research, but I'm pretty sure that this has been in town ownership for quite a long time. And just the last piece I'd say is you can see throughout our property there are little footpaths that have kind of been created over time. And so certainly the public purpose that's served historically and likely in the future is for access to the beach. Uh, there's any number of other access points, obviously, there's a parking lot next door, but that's one of the purposes that it serves. So that's kind of that, the backdrop to this, and that's the best if Melissa <coughs> more specifically about the proposal. Thank you very much, Tom, and thank you all for uh, having us here tonight. Uh, I think Tom already introduced us, and I'm Melissa Murphy and Jim and Kathy Wellhand. Mm -hmm. Um, your materials for the workshop, I think, and, and the map shows the, the two abutting properties, and, and uh, Kathy and Jim did bring this picture, which really doesn't show anything. Uh, um, it's essentially the same. So uh, we've got that if, if you have any questions about it. Um, neither of these two strips really comply with today's zoning or um, really optimal land use. Uh, the Wellahan's home, I think if you saw in the materials that, that Jim prepared, have been there for a very long time. Um, between the, the development of the town parking lot and time and the effects of time, the property needs some extensive work, um, maybe even rebuilding. But because they are um, a legally uh, non-conforming use, but still a non-conforming use, there's not a lot that they could, could do at this time. Um, so it, it just seemed um, logical to Jim, who you'll find is a very logical person. <laughs> that uh, reconfiguring the town's property and, the, and their property uh, could result in 
maybe two or three um, mm -hmm. legally uh, created lots, um, and that could be to the benefit of both the town and obviously the Wellahans, um, and could, could lead to a lot of public benefit as well. Uh, obviously, any transaction that's to occur, as Tom said, would have to be um, completed with full due diligence on both parties. It would have to be fair, obviously, to both parties. We, we'd have to, and there are a number of factors that would, we'd want to look into, appraisal, zoning, um, engineering, um, just to name a few. But it really doesn't make sense to, um, for either the town or the Wellahans to spend any more money and, unless there is the appetite or uh, the willingness from the town to enter into such a transaction. So that's what we're here for, just to present that possibility and to just gauge your interest and reaction. We'll be happy to answer any questions um, and hear your thoughts. And we, again, we really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here tonight. And I'll just advance the slide. It was in the council's packet, but this shows uh, kind of a quick version, if you will, initial version of how that land swap might work. And uh, essentially it would be for us to switch the front and the back ownership. And so we, we would each be consolidating our, our ownership rather than all the way through from King Street to the lower high water mark, whatever it is, be kind of con concentrating ownership on the front portion and the back portion, if you will. I don't understand what you mean by that. Hmm. Yeah. Are you proposing that the town give up the front portion of one for the front portion of their theirs and take the front portion of the Wellhands? The predicament the Wellhands find themselves in is that currently their lot is 50 feet, a legally non-conforming. But to do the sort of work that they think they need to do, you they need 80 feet minimum frontage. And so it's a... They need what? 80, 80 feet. And the only way for them to accomplish that is is to look to one or the other a butter, and we're both. <laughs> uh, and so the, the uh, I guess it's come forward to kind of focus on this property line as the most most natural way to proceed if, if we do anything, as opposed to moving into the parking area. Ed, my thought on the thing is that uh, first, let me be plead guilty. I. I am an environmentally concerned person. I've got lots of, lots of, lots of bad aspects to me. That's just one of them. Uh, but but uh, as I look at it, it's a small piece of land. It, it's, if you're bird nesting there, it's a great value. If you're not, it's, it's a small piece of land where you can't do a lot of good. If there were two houses in the back lot, you can get a road. So the road was continued, and we're willing to do that. That road was built by a fellow in Canada who built his private road. He used to rent our house in the summertime when the kids were going to school and uh, going to college and so forth. So you could put a lot of a house from that front uh, area, house on King Street, and that there could be a third house on, on the front lot, which is what, that's where the other houses adjacently are thinking. Oh. And so the town would have three taxable properties rather than one. So I think it's to the town's benefit. It's it's not a, it's a odd mix, uh, which is what the world is made of, I guess, but uh, it's not a very functional use of the land right now. Tom, could you show what the access would be and where those two other lots sure. would uh, be located? So this is Dune Lane. Mm -hmm. This is a public street Yep. Uh, currently. Uh, to, uh, what Mr. Wellahan is referring to is if all of this was concentrated in their ownership, Right. Uh, there would be sufficient size to at least have a second lot on that right, property. Right. And to do so, it's in a lot, I think, to extend the road time. To do those, to do so, we would have to, we'd have, have to, they would have to establish front. farms, right. which could be accomplished by a uh, natural extension of Dunefield yep. uh, through this lot. And in doing so, uh, potentially the town could benefit by gotcha. a third lot. Yep. That would be totally at our election. We may wish to expand the parking lot. Yeah. I was going to uh, add, is there a yeah. potential? Uh, there are certainly permit issues uh, right. rega uh, regardless of how you choose to develop it, but I've not even considered um, it's very seldom that we're at maximum capacity. We have overflow across King Street. Yeah, it's not as if we have problem. a burning desire to expand that lot, right. but that's an option that we could and should consider uh, if this goes forward. And, and the swap... And the swap would, in, uh, would, in other words, that lower portion would also go all the way to the water line, correct? Yes. The swap. Uh, I mean so we would gain some beach 
so to speak, publicly on the beach to To the extent these beads well, describe the low watermark, right. and most yeah. of them do, I presume these two do. Right, high true. watermark. High, high watermark. Is high watermark? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that, that admittedly, we've not dug into it that deep, right. but, yeah, I, I suspect there is some public benefit in that aspect as well. Right. Well, Does the town currently have any uh, plan, long-range planning for its easement or its peace, regardless of this transaction? I, I've not heard of, the only, uh, I, it was laid out initially with the original subdivision back in, you know, Last ago. century, uh, as Avenue Four, that's the, the natural extension of that. I don't see what purpose would be served. Uh, certainly, extending it out to the dune. Uh, at most, you would extend it to Dune Field, but there again, I, I, I'm not sure why you'd ever need or want to do that. It's more roads to build and roads to plow. Uh, in my opinion, I don't see much public value um, in, in terms of building mm -hmm. that road out. Mm -hmm. Does um, pub uh, not public work? Sorry, does Fire department have any? I, I'm assuming they access if they need to off of the next street. But but do they consider that a fire lane or a route that they use to get onto the beach? That footpath? Not to my knowledge. It's not. It's not, um, it's not for vehicular traffic. It's just been beaten down with foot, uh, foot traffic. Actually, from I think they use the other side of the parking lot. Cause it's right. I'm assuming they do. But as I think, uh, if I go back. Yeah, it, hmm. yeah, right here there's the road and, and we there's actually reinforcements under this right. sand. It's been covered with sand, but reinforcements yeah. you can drive a vehicle. So public works will get to the beach via that way. But I'm not hmm. aware that uh, vehicles, they probably could if they wanted to, but we don't ever go this yeah. way. I really yeah. believe they get stuck. It's soft sand. It is soft sand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What yeah. use do you see of that property over the decades that you've owned your place? What has it been used for? Uh, summer camp? As a summer home. It has no insulation. And no, I meant no, the, he means the, 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 the town. The town. Right the town. Yeah. What, hap there? what happens there? Yeah. Um, Avenue 4 has a lot of people that use it. And mm -hmm. we know them all by name. And we have a block party every year. And we certainly would, you know, uh, we want to have them walk there. access That's the right away continue. they've always had, and we got to enjoy them. So your goal would be to have access still. Interested in observing a concert, some kind of an easement. Right. So are you, are you talking about, you talked about you wanting a lot approximately 80 feet wide, and I'm assuming that those two lots are 100 feet, approximately mm -hmm. 100 feet. Right. Yeah. So you're talking about keeping a 20-foot wide It could be done at any, through there? Any one of a, a dozen but different the, ways. They my, need 80. We need 80. My, my guppy action <laughs> and my thing is this. When I go to the beach, I walk down to the beach. I got a t-shirt, a hat, and I used to bring a ball when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Now when I see people going to the beach, they get dragging a wagon. It's a, it's, it's a whole <laughs> different world. And I always, if I'm out all the way, and I kind of say, it's right, a free ride away to the beach. And they'll say, okay, thanks. It's occasionally they'll go there, but more often if they get stuff, they'll go down through the parking lot. That's, yeah. So everyone's welcome, but uh, it, it's not going to be as much. It will be used by, by Jason people, by some people in Avenue 4. Most of them go down with stuff. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, I was just trying to get a sense. Those paths look like they're pretty worn down, so there must there must be a, you know, oh, yeah. a fair amount of traffic. And oh, yeah. a lot of but folks come to Infield and they make access Right, uh, they've got over our property. Other but than the ones probably that live mm -hmm. right in this yeah. area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you are saying you'd yeah. be open to some type of just oh, a, 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 minimum a, a, sort of easement. Public easement. 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 Not a problem with that. <coughs> Did you have a question, Kate? Um, I think yeah. I was just going to say, to add, I think what you're, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think what they're asking for is, to, for compliance sake, they have to have 80. Right. But they'll have 100. So... Who knows? They might use 90. I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, they have to have the 80. They're going to get 100. They need 80 right. because of what they want to build, right? Uh, no, no yeah. for, 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 ending for, build. for for our standards. Uh, town the, standards. the town says you could have an 80-foot frontage uh, for fire access to have a, have a building lot. Currently, it's 50. So we're in violation. Right. That violation was made back in 1992. Right. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. we, we, they can, the same with any right, they can keep it. They can keep what they have. Right, they can keep what they have, but to change it in any way, to make any changes, they need to. They need to comply with the current standards. So I have a question. Certainly, there's you know a great interest if you get to gain a few house spots. But I am fairly cognizant of. You know, this specific area has a very unique view corridor. So my question for you is, would you still be interested in some kind of a proposal if it was with the caveat that will allow you to build to your to your expectations within your lot, but the expectation is it's the one singular house and the rest needs to remain as open space? Uh, Jessica, my, my thought is this. We've been there since 1940. Uh, Dunfield Road wasn't there, and other places I thought were there, mm -hmm. when, and all of Hillsby Shores wasn't there. Mm -hmm. We used to go to the creek and... and, and, and down where the motel is. Mm -hmm. and, that was the last And, and Cash Minnows. So I, 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 I think it would be somewhat discriminatory to say everyone else can have done it, mm -hmm. but you can't. Mm -hmm. You can understand that feeling. You might feel the same way, Jessica, in that, <laughs> if you were in that situation. But beyond that, the value of, of the, the the lot with uh, any encumbrances or deed restrictions we would impose, such as limiting it to one home, would have a bearing on the value, I presume. So that's another thing to consider. And that's part of what Melissa and I, I think would love to know about before mm -hmm. we invest time and money and effort in appraisals. We need to give proper instruction to the appraiser mm -hmm. uh, as to right. what uh, would be allowed What's on the lot. Because that could... could Vary tremendously if there's a second mm -hmm. uh, buildable lot. What challenge do we face in doing that? Because I'm thinking of another property, a point point in which um, the view quarter is. <laughs> came up, and I'm not going to. That was my for uh, example. Um, I'm not going to bring up specifics around that yep. particular case. I just wonder that you know we have zoning rules, we have planning boards, we have approval processes. So why not allow them to determine whether or not that additional space should be conforming and what goes into that, rather than putting it into a deed. And I just want to throw out there is that, and I've held this a bit, I want to ask why, do, why don't we just sell the property anyways if there's no future use for the town? I've never believed that the town should be in the, in the business of purchasing land or acquiring land if there is no long range plan for it in the first place. And to me, I'd rather have three houses that are paying very good in taxes um, than holding onto a piece of property that we're not using. The only thing I would say, it, it strikes me, uh, <laughs> A access to the beach is paramount, and uh, they're not making it anymore. So I think that would be the biggest loss, is removing another access point to the beach. But you wouldn't remove the... You have 150 square feet. Uh, <laughs> Councilor Baybine was suggesting that we sell it lock, stock, and barrel oh, okay. and have no, mm -hmm. retain no interest in the property. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's certainly possible, but I think that's the downside. Hmm. And there is... Uh, I don't live there, but I've witnessed it. Uh, we can certainly... Uh, survey folks and understand better, but I think there is a fair amount of foot traffic that makes their way to, to the beach this way. Oh, yeah. There is an access path uh, either between this house or this one, but it's private. It's for the uh, use of these five properties or four properties. Mm -hmm. So uh, folks would have to make their way, I guess, over to the lot and walk down to the beach this way. That's I think you could also incorporate a 10 foot, 20 foot you know, on the borderline. <coughs> Some type of passage, even if we still come down Dunefield, and still could take a right to take down to the beach. Perhaps. I mean, let alone to go an extra 100 feet to then get into the parking lot. I don't. If this wasn't so close to the parking lot that had a right. lot of it right. frontage, so it would be. I totally understand your point, Tom. Yep. Uh, this is not, to me, a denial of access issue. Or if this road is built out, it would be built, could be built, um, and we could reconfigure some spaces well, here so mm -hmm. pedestrians could exactly. get into the lot and make quicker, safe access to the right. that way, too. So yeah. there's a number of ways to yeah. look at it. Tom, Tom where did you, you said there may be three buildable lots or three. Can you just kind of highlight where you think those those <laughs> those houses would go? Well, under this, this well, let's go back. This is, shows a wider view. So I'm not sure where the line would be drawn, it's either on this side of the roadway or that yeah. side. Yeah. So this 50 feet is built out, this roadway, so there's frontage for another lot here. Yeah. And permitting aside, another oh, okay. lot here. And of course the well in the Oh, okay. So there's three, three including the well in the Where Welling could give up the frontage 
I thought you were, I thought they were trying to ask. No. Oh. No. I was like, wow, that's going to be So you're willing to give up each run? Yeah. Right. Which is yeah. more valuable, they to say the least. And, and if you don't mind, beach taxes, too. <laughs> 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 they, uh, well, I assume you'd want to have uh, an easement right to gain access to the ocean. Oh, everyone should have. Uh, everyone That's should right. have some yeah. often. So a pathway easement. easement right of mm -hmm. five, sure. eight feet. I believe eight. eight feet is what they have all down through Pillsbury yeah. Shores. This doesn't yeah. quite and show it. It is eight. I think the Ashen Street path at Higgins is eight feet. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's standard. It's pretty standard. Seven or eight feet. Okay. So that, that's big enough to let anybody with a cart go through. And I think I've heard some of the historic work that I've been digging around with. A lot of the times it's a reference of 10 feet. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I'm just yeah. throwing it out there. A lot of the, you mm -hmm. know, the footpaths that we, we've been mm -hmm. looking at, we have one for on, a, on off of Sprague Way to, to Scotto Marker and a few other you know, footpaths. It's mm -hmm. been referenced quite, quite yeah. readily as 10 and foot, they don't footpaths. Like and they don't like to have them too wide because they don't want vehicles yeah, going right, down. Exactly. You want to keep right. them narrow so that people can't be bringing vehicles down. Right. That's why eight is usually... Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that fine line of being able to mow it to keep it clear mm -hmm. or, or do what's necessary mm -hmm. but not too they big can't if you're driving It's all down. beach grass. Mm -hmm. They can't mow. Two, two other just comments. If you look at the houses to the left of our... Of our the fellow beside us, We'd love to have us cut the trees down in front so we could see the ocean, speaking of you. And the fellow in front of him is the light of the trees so the air wants to stay forever. <laughs> <laughs> so so views, are, views are funny things. My, oh, yeah. my, uh, my, my thought is this, is that the, if, as you go down from our spot towards the beach, you go down quite a hill. And the back, uh, it was no problem forever before when there was a hill beside it. But but with the packing up there, it does in heavy, uh, heavy rainstorms and heavy, uh, haven't been any, any heavy sea surges yet, but they will come. Uh, we are thinking we should elevate that area, which will also protect the adjacent uh, properties, because if, if flood comes in there, which is five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, it's good to have it protected as much as it can be. So we think that, that the gradation of the parking lot has been a problem over the years, yeah. and that it drains into our front yard. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's actually a retaining wall here. Sorry. Yeah, but, but not, not in the very front where it goes down. It, it, it fills the... So it, 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 that could be helpful, I think, for not only for us, but generally for the neighborhood. Okay, you have yeah. a question? Um, so are you saying that since the parking lot has gone in, you've, you've had to do maintenance? your well, lot because of the parking lot? Actually, we haven't done the maintenance. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's part of the problem. <laughs> but, it's, but it's there. There's, an yeah. issue. There's mm -hmm. like extending issues there yeah, that sure. due to the parking lot being uh -oh. put in. The, 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 and you could, you're welcome to come on over sometime. But the sure. Uh, um, let's see, July. I was there in August, time. so it's so a good time to be there. The <laughs> foundation <laughs> cracked a little bit, and the, and the chimney toppled over. So it was, you know, it's an old place. What did what? But there used to be a hill beside us the same way. But you take the hill down, mm -hmm. and you're on a, a, sand, a right. sand hill. All of a sudden, things go the other way. And then the town did put in a supporting... A, a, a retaining wall, but that was after, and it, it okay. so life goes on, and, right. and uh, you know, so it it's a lovely old spot. It's old, yeah. it's charming, it's inefficient. It, it's the history behind it, the history behind it is really neat to read. Mm -hmm. Well, it was. Yeah. Well, I, if you get a chance to come down to the American Legion, we have a picture of Pine Point yeah. in the uh, early World War One when that was completely undeveloped, mm -hmm. and there was army tents and mm -hmm. all kinds of ships down there. So it's pretty. Wow. It's a pretty beautiful place, yeah. I, I miss World War I, but World War II we had this. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, have you discussed it at all with your neighbors to see whether or not we're stirring up a hornet's nest? We were actually um, huh. in discussion with Ron Owens before, and when the parking lot was proposed, um, we wanted some sort of a buffer. But the day after Mother moved home, the bulldozers came, and we were left with property about 
like this with roots sticking out the side mm -hmm. and our building washing mm -hmm. into the lot and blocking the so called uh, drain. I, I, so I think the question, though, Kath, is actually what, how do the neighbors feel about it? And that partly answers my question. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know the answer fully. Uh, there would we There's have a new neighbor on the front. I haven't met him. And, and, and you, you, you can't create. Do you like change? <laughs> Who likes change? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there probably is going to be some adverse reaction. We have never raised uh, an issue with anything that's happened in front. As we've looked at it around, we've seen all kinds of change. So I think what we would try and do is we try and do it in a reasonable way to be good for people. Are we going to please everybody? Have, did you listen to the news tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you never please everybody. We're, we're, we're a funny species. It's just the nature of, of humanity and inhumanity. We, we, we tend to find things. So, so you can find some mixed reactions, and there may be a bit of a harness test, honestly. I, I don't know. But, but what's good for the town? What's good long term? And, you know, we haven't created a harness test for anything that happened in front of the side, and I'm not sure it would be reasonable to... But, th but there'll be some adverse reaction. I would almost guarantee you that. What do you think, Jessica? Well, that's my band on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think at this point um, we, we should probably, I, I have my own thoughts, but, but um, really? I, yeah, I have my own thoughts. But I, have a, I have a huge concern about, can I borrow your little pointer, Tom? I don't know how to work it, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about <laughs> what gets built right there. And, I am too. What, what comes to mind is our other walk path that we recently did and the type of construction that went in there, and we're talking mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm thinking trajectory if we're talking three law. I, I, I'm open to the concepts of something that's fair and equitable between, between the two. Uh, and I am open to that concept. And mm -hmm. I would think which I'm going to come back to in a minute to find a consensus from, from you guys to give to Tom to run with, mm -hmm. that we're probably open to it, mm -hmm. but we are very conscious of other transactions that have happened and, and the consequences of, of it. Right now, no, and I mean no disrespect, okay. your hands are tied, and if we do nothing, we gain nothing, we lose nothing. Right. And so, you know, Thank you. I... I I, I just caution. I, mm -hmm. I'd like a little more detail about exactly what's going to go there. So I, I think Jessica. the public would probably want that detail as mm -hmm. well. Je just um, if, if you look at the adjacent lot to us, there are three houses there. Yes. Uh, the one that's back number six uh, is is really a very large house, uh, and we have noticed that I. Okay, do you give the, you give the rest of the whole Wanna story? <laughs> the rest of the whole story about me? Yeah. I'm a left-wing, socialistic, <laughs> hey. environmentalist, <laughs> peacenik radical. And that's <laughs> saying it nicely. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 and the opinions of the uh, husband are not necessarily <laughs> <laughs> We're not about to do anything extraordinary to build a mansion there. That is very far from, from my thoughts, my desires. And whatever trees we can leave there, we'll feel good about leaving there. Mm -hmm. And we want to fill the lot in there because it, it just but needs to be done to, to I think a really you have to raise up homes now, don't yeah. you? Yeah, with that, the flood zone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess mm -hmm. I should maybe Not change my, my statement slightly. Is I, I can see the reason why you, you, you really need to have some more wiggle room with your home. Even to winterize your home, I think they're going to be... Okay. Up the creek, if you will, because there's not much room to go. Well, they'd have to go to so ZBA to mm -hmm. do anything. So, so I, I can appreciate that. It's only so important important important. Important. that there's, you know, some need to be able to to work a little bit. It's likely to be um, hard, a difficult hardship argument. Yes, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Exactly. Yep. Uh, I, I would just remind you, I mean, forever is forever, a, a long time, right? Yeah. And so I know the well hands I've met with them and sat with them long enough. I know they're well intentioned and what they what they really need to get done. Mm -hmm. but uh, we have to have eyes wide open, and uh, what can happen there is what's allowed under the zoning laws, uh, unless we restrict it otherwise. And by the, 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 the other extension of that is, from the town's perspective, we're going to be here a long time, too, I suspect. Mm. And uh, just providing for the future, whether it's a lot expansion of or, or other public use of that front land, 
that we can't even contemplate today. Right. Right. Um, and age restrictions aren't unusual in Scarborough. I mean, the, right. the old Orion Center, when uh, Hannaford sold that to Maine General, they put a restriction on that that it can never be a store, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure so they did. That <laughs> heard of, um, I just wanted, uh, when it gets into residential properties, it's a little bit, to me, it's a little bit different than economic growth and other areas. Um, I do want to ask a question. Is there anybody else that has an interest in talking about getting rid of the entire parcel on behalf of the town? What do you mean by getting rid of? Selling it, selling it. Not giving it away. I mean, there's fair market value to yeah. it. But selling um, like the whole length of it? The whole length of it. Well, not particularly. Not for me. Mm -hmm. um, no. I, I mean, to get the best value from the town's point of view, and I think these are great people. They really are. But I think our objective is to do the best thing for the town. And to get the best value for the town is probably to create a building yeah. lot that is useful. Right now we've got a very narrow strip of land that's long and skinny and, and not, not right. of much use. You can't build more. Uh, and it doesn't sound like the public access easement is going to be much of a problem here, that everyone would want to maintain that. So that, that would be resolved as a part of this. But we would have what would be a very valuable building lot, and I share Sean's view that it's, it's a building lot. Sell it. Take the <laughs> 500 to a million that would mm. result from that and put it in a fund that would benefit our beaches, because that's what I understand we often do with, with properties like this. If you, think, if you look at properties <coughs> 2, 4, and 5, and 57, 6, and 7, as you go along Dunfield Lane, there's three houses heading towards the water, and then there's three more houses, 57, 6, and 7. What we're talking about is 61 and adding two more, yeah. very much on the same size lots. Uh, and we wouldn't end up owning anything. We would have a public access easement for everybody, mm -hmm. which they'd be quite pleased to have. It's never going to be any more or less than that. And we'd probably be a half million to a million richer, and we'd have served the needs of some people who sort of, they probably didn't do that well when the parking lot came in. That doesn't sound like a good deal. So I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, not that it was a wrong, but sort of a right corrected. No. Can I ask so I favor Sean's view of it. Let's, let's see if we can make a deal and, and, and make it work for everybody. And I think we have consensus enough to move forward yeah, with so exploring, exploring a deal. I, I would, however, humbly remind that, you know, we have an issue of the dunes in front of Pillsbury <coughs> disappearing. So oh, I, I don't know how, how beneficial or savvy it would be to create house lots in a problem, problem area. Well, um, yes. I can see further back, but, yes. but you know, yes. I, 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 I don't I know. I think the environmental issues would be part of it's the, the might have might as well. value right. of the property, um, but yeah, right. some, some is better than none, and right now we have none. So, but I, I think we do have consensus to, yeah. you know, certainly move forward, and, and that's, that's the important part, is mm. to know that we all agree that we're willing to, to let staff work on a proposal with, yeah. with you right. to bring to the floor to talk about. The, the um, only thing I would just raise, and I don't want to be the rain on the parade, but why it makes sense to have an exclusive arrangement in discussing with a landowner is that there's something in exchange for us other than right. simply monetary benefit, say outright sale. If we're going to sell it, why wouldn't we open it to the market? So mm -hmm. I just, I just put that on the table. Um, I think we can justify why we should be dealing with them because right. there is a right. hardship. Right, a hardship. Uh, but absolutely. Thank you. But I just want to make sure there could be other members of the public to say, hey, why aren't we exposing this to the market? Um, so, but I think there's ways to effectively provide that rationale. And the non-monetary non benefits that we've just discussed. Is the is the indirect value of the whole conversation with them rather than putting it on the market? So it's being able to get the easement, being able to determine where maybe that third house goes, so right. that it's further enough back and doesn't ruin the doom. I think there's a way that. I guess it's the follow-up question. I'm not sure of what your timeline is, Jim and Kathy. Um, what would? Well, I'm 76. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would be ideal, I suppose, for the town and perhaps you is to actually have a subdivision, have everyone understand how it all is going to work, where the lots are, how they're serviced, where the easements are. It'll be difficult, though we can talk about 
conceptually how that might work, but seeing right. it on the face of the earth and on a plan would be ideal. And right. to the extent your timeline allows, that might be a, a good way to pursue it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can have a neighborhood discussion. Sure. And I, I think that's a reasonable way to approach yeah. it, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people have a democracy is not a bad thing. It's a little awkward, but it's not a bad thing. One other thing I'm going to say, just as, just as a thought, because put yourself in an opposition, uh, the value of the two lots behind is a little bit reduced if there's a parking lot directly in front. That's so I, 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 I think it's got to be understood. Should be some, are we likely to use it? Are we, I like, how, how do we want to handle the thing? And, and to, you know, and if you do, yeah. yeah. So it's just, it's just going to be into the, the thought process. Yes, I think any restrictions on all the various lots or some things right. that will need to be considered That's right. before we have an appraisal done, really, and figure out what the real value is of right. all the property. Right. That's yeah. correct. So there's um, some good, good information, some good starting points, um, some public outreach and a neighborhood meeting. Um, and some That's something you'd like the town to take facilitate lead on? And I can help with that. I don't, I can help you with we, we haven't gotten that far in the evening, but I know <laughs> somebody that's going to likely have a communication role. Um, <laughs> I would love to help you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and part of this was to, part of this was to kind of the scope of work to be done, and in the prior conversation about what to do with whatever wherever the the piece that comes back, that how would we reconfigure that? And one question was, is it a housing lot? Is it value to the town to do something with it? But the other thing, and I, and I don't know how much staff work it is, but you know, I think Sean, you asked the question: What was going? To, what What are the alternative uses of that of that land that we could make use of for the town of Scarborough? So I don't know if it's worth a little bit of time just to kind of brainstorm around what other things could we do with that reconfigured piece um, that would add value to to Scarborough residents and just give some, you know, because we said we really didn't have a plan for it, so it'd be good if there's just some thought about what we could do with that. And, and you know, that, that's a reasonable thought, because I, I think you do, if there's an issue with the pipe and plumbers, and well, what's to be done? Is that large enough to, to do something, the whole thing? And I don't know, but it's thrown into the, into the question as well. Well, so do you feel like we have enough? I know that there's, there does seem to be a comfortable uh, consensus. Um, no, I think what we're... What the next steps? I think the next steps would be... Um, for the town to do whatever research <coughs> we've been directed to do, and, um, and we, and I guess I'd look for some direction from you too about what you see as the next steps. Do we go to some kind of memorandum of understanding? Do we, you know, or do we come up with a hire engineers, come up with a, a plan, and who who pays for that? I suppose is the question, and the is the one of the un unasked questions too. I mean. Obviously, the wellheads are willing to pay. The, I would put um, neighborhoods and things like that mm -hmm. close to the top of that, mm -hmm. just so that we get that feel to make sure before we are dumb. I mean, I know we're going to, uh, speaking for myself, I can't imagine not doing something to help mm -hmm. them. Um, but I think we have to be cautious of... I, I took an outreach neighborhood meeting just to hear um, after you know what you is that mm -hmm. right. the proposal is going to be for that site. Mm -hmm. So if you know it's one house lot or you know it's two house lots and mm -hmm. they're going to be one story, two story, three story, when when, when that segment mm -hmm. comes comes together is the outreach point because then you can go to the neighbors and say what would be your concern for this, you know, kind of typical of maybe almost like one of our contracts. Zones where it's, yeah, it's hard there though. Buffer, is there you know, a, I understand no. that, but it's hard to know what whether it would be one, two, or three lots without having planning board process. Right. No, I, I suspect you could do um, short of the permitting, which is right. potentially a big question on the, the front, on the front, the front of lot, lot. Right. But, um, I think without investing, you know, full engineering expense and effort, we, we could have get a pretty good survey. assurance of of how many lots could would be capable there. Right. Um, uh, uh, you alluded to a memo of understanding. We've used that as a, as a mechanism to advance something beyond a conversation to writing, but yet it's still conceptual and non-binding. Right. And right. I might suggest for your clients, they, they might like that level of comfort that the council's actually taken, um, you know, 
seen the proposal a, a bit more fleshed out based on the feedback given tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, it also is another chance for the public to hear it and to react to it. Um, right. The value of tonight is kind of exposing this to light, and who knows what we'll hear in the coming days and weeks. Right. Um, some people. I think it likely <laughs> to probably be yeah. probably one more workshop as well. Yeah. You know, um, right. you know, on prior to, to coming to council. If we pursue a memo of understanding, it could be a. a you know, one or two page at most. It doesn't need to be very yeah. complicated. Right. And that could be on an upcoming agenda. Right. Uh, that might be a good place to start. We can turn that around fairly quickly. Right. Uh, Sean, I think you had a question. Well, I mean, not to break this down too simply, I think that um, I would like to hear first, so there's been the recommendation, or at least not recommendation, the thought that of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wellham maybe purchasing the entire lot. That's a personal decision on whether or not they can take that on. And mm -hmm. I'd like to hear at some point, not today, <laughs> whether or not that's even within your scope, because if it's not, then it changes at least my direction on how I engage in the conversation, because mm -hmm. it's something I would like to explore. Mm -hmm. um, and at least two other counselors have said so. So, But if it's not something that's economically possible, mm -hmm. then I want to be told up front so I can get off that, that train and mm -hmm. get on a different train. Sure, sure. I, I, I think that's, that's a, not an unreasonable thought. It, it puts it totally into private development and yeah. us doing that. And it's not a not a bad thought. I, I probably could do that and uh, develop it one lot at a time. And I just don't want to go down a path of discussing uh, it, building uh, something around it, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know what I'm saying? Cause if it inconveniences you in that conversation, then I don't want to do that. Sure, and you're kind. I, I, I'm very comfortable. Honestly, we looked at so this is awkward. If the town wanted to pick up the land as well. I mean, so, 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 so we're, we're, we're comfortable going either way. We, 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 we could, it's not too late for a new career. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, the, the yield analysis would be productive. So uh, even if we don't get that far, we'll have that yield analysis to be productive. So even if we don't, if they're not interested and willing to buy the whole piece, sure. it would be good for us to understand what we're left What's with. The, right. and, uh, in that scenario, the line might be drawn at the upper side, and we actually establish this as right of way, so we we know that there'll be frontage for a lot if we ever choose in the future to mm -hmm. develop it or to sell it outright. Really, it's, let's face it, though, is that strip about value to anyone but the well hands? I mean, it seems to me that would be that. Well, I'm not. Maybe I'm what not. Is the right of way, you mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm not really advancing my clients <laughs> by asking that question, but. I mean, I would the, would the, the, three, the three families that could benefit. Well, well yeah, you're right. It could go. It could go to the other butter. Benefit this lot as well. Right. I'm helping my client. That's right. I have a title. I have a, I have a title question that right. I'm that's assuming that's someone looked into. Is is that a paper street? We Was it ever no, abandoned? No, we don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. So that's one of the first things. Yeah. I guess. I don't know what that means. Before we would ever probably go to looking at engineering expenses, right. is figure out whether the, if the town really has the right to sell it. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I'm asking. If it's asking. already reverted to right. The if it's already reverted right. to the abutters, right. then that's a it's, it's an moved. academic then question. It's moved. Right. Yeah. I oh. don't, I personally don't like the idea of easements. I think if we own that strip of land, and people are using that strip of land, and if I don't know, it's 50 feet wide. We ought to keep eight feet or 10 feet of that strip all the way down through. The feet. Hold it back. Yep. Well, you can do and, that too. And ra yeah. Rather yeah. than yeah. Easements, yeah. 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 Easements. Rather than have it over someone else. Over time, time, easements really, really get muddy. Yeah. And people yeah, put good. up fences and yeah. stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And true. if we own the land yeah. now, let's keep it and point. then <coughs> negotiate some sort of a settlement on the rest of it. That's is there any other question, just because we do need well, to I have two, two thoughts, if I might add on it. First, um, in the next 30 years, I probably will not own the land going forward. You don't know what the next house is going to do. So I understand exactly where you're coming from. Uh, one thing about the, the, the easement, which should be there, it, we should make sure it doesn't interfere with the right to extend the road, though. Right. Yes. In other, in other oh, words, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, so, so that's the one thing I'm looking for highest and right. best to use. Just extend Dune Field. Basically, go through the park, end of the parking lot. Because otherwise, it would be a spite strip. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Was there any other questions, council questions for? All 
All right, then. So, do you, no. Tom, do you feel you have enough to move forward with to <laughs> seek out something to bring back and have a little more? I, I think so. I, I think the best path forward to give the council another look at it when it's uh, firmed up a bit more is, is through a memorandum of understanding approach. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be complicated right. or elaborate, but it further, and certainly Melissa and I and the Wellahans and my staff will talk further about how best to approach this. Uh, mm -hmm. That sounds good. I All think right. the neighborhood should be getting involved as soon as possible, to be perfectly honest with you. I wouldn't go too far down the road without getting mm -hmm. the neighborhood involved. I, I will say you do have to have an idea of what you're going to tell the neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I don't, I don't um, want to say, Key, what would you like us to do with this property? Yeah, you're going to, well, we're thinking at least <laughs> X and Y, and T and Z is a possibility, but, but at least know on the upfront to go out to the neighborhood with right. th these are the options that, that we're, you know, have available. A, a component of the, of the memorandum of understanding might be a uh, recitation that uh, there will be public outreach before we go yeah. to the next yeah. step. Mm -hmm. And you're going to make that happen. Uh, although, <laughs> and I, I agree with it, it's important to have everyone on board. But again, Ed, if no one had ever asked you before the other places were built, would you, you don't have to get us, you take that, take that into your perspective too. Right. You're not dealing with the average ho uh, property owner. <laughs> I mean, we have this obligation. This is oh, sure. yeah. public land, and and, uh, and we need to be open. It, it, well, the, uh, but the neighbors, <coughs> would it be respectful to the neighbors to have some sort of conceptual site plan? Right. Right. That so that because it, it took us a little while ourselves to grasp what we were talking about here. Right. And if they saw that there were going to be three lots created, one already has a house on it, two others could potentially have a house on it right. with frontage uh, off of Doomfield uh, that ex is extended out, right. the remaining 100 feet. At least then it's easier to talk to people about what we're, what we're proposing. Yeah, I can envision uh, you know, an exhibit to the MOU that would uh, right. you know, be a, a magic marker showing a proxy <laughs> right. lot line just to, so there's actually right. something to see and talk about and yeah. react to. Right. Yeah. And there are advantages to Davis as well if when you raise the land and protect their, their land from potential flooding as well. And when all of a sudden it's not the last house before the parking lot. Those are mm -hmm. both things that are properly done, bring some positive aspect to it. All right. Yeah, I say you all. Thank you for, for coming you. down. Thank, thank you very much. We've all been open to speak to us. Thank you. I look forward to hearing back from you. I was trying to keep you in a few minutes. This is a minor.